Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's hot topic. Today, we're talking nutritional truth bomb. What's a nutritional truth bomb have to do with autoimmunity? Well, a ton. So today, we have a nutritional truth bomb, and we're going to do a deep dive into why can't you sleep at night? Hey everybody, I'm Maggie UMD, functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform Protocol and the Facebook community called Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, go ahead and click the link above or below in the description to join our Facebook group where we have 56,000 people in that community. And that's where I go. You get a ton of behind the scenes content and access to resources and trainings uh, that are totally bonus. And that's called Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. And I'm Meg UMD, and I have been a functional physician, first a family medicine physician, and then I got really, really sick and had to really learn a lot about functional and alternative medicine and nutrition to actually turn around my own autoimmune diseases and mystery symptoms. So here we are. We have a program called Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. And today, what I would love to do is uh, we're going to really blow the lid off on why you can't sleep. And believe it or not, it sounds like a common symptom, period. But for those with autoimmunity, whether you're man, woman, or child, believe it or not, insomnia is a big problem. And yet it is so misunderstood. People think, um, and a lot of treatment around insomnia is around either medication or uh, sometimes supplementation, which I call green band-aids too. So today we're really going to dig deep on what is the underlying causes of why you can't sleep. Joining me today, oh, a lady in red. <laughs> no, not that we coordinated or anything. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, our lady in red today is Allie Simmons, and she is our functional nutritionist with Transform. And okay, you need no introduction. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Can you tell us, tell us about you, Allie, and what your role is in the Transform program? Allison Samen, let's just get that correct right off the bat. I always mix it up. You Everyone know that. Does. Everyone know. does. It's okay. okay. I just call you Allie. Call me Allie. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a functional nutritionist and certified holistic health coach. And when you were sharing a little bit about your story, just the basics, it, it really was resonating with me because I struggled with unexpl unexplained chronic pain. No, I had no, I never had a diagnosis for 10 years, unexplained chronic pain, constipation, migraines, hormonal imbalance. Although nobody told me that I know now <laughs> uh, skin issues, acne for 10 years of my life. And I saw 10 years. 10 years in my twenties. Yeah. So like, that's not how you want to be spending your, what's supposed to be like your, your, your best years of your life. <laughs> yeah. They were not, they were miserable. And it's funny because I saw the top, top specialists in New York city. You and, obviously hadn't seen me yet. Right. I didn't, I no, hadn't, I hadn't heard of I you. Know, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until, I mean, I saw anybody who said, you know, go see my, this person, go see my, that I tried every lotion and potion and scan and yeah. physical therapy and traction and you name it. I did it. I was on it. Nothing worked until this crazy man introduced me to this crazy concept that I, I don't know if you've heard of it. I'm going to, we're truth bombing here, right? It's called nutrition. <gasps> I even never more, heard of it, but even more specific, it's called food, <laughs> blood sugar mastery. <laughs> yeah. Like mastery, mastery. Not dabbling mastery. Nobody <laughs> ever, not one doctor or specialist ever asked me about what I was eating, how I was eating. Not yeah. one. Yeah. And so it's, a, it's, it's, amazing that I had this miraculous recovery when all it was, was getting my body to do exactly what it's supposed to do in the rhythm, you know, going back, my getting my body into balance and working with its own rhythm. Yeah. And I'm not on any medication for anything. And I haven't been for well over 10 years and now I'm old. <laughs> 
Me too. And you know, I hit early menopause at 36. I have like at least three autoimmune diagnoses and 20 mystery symptoms that are not mystery. They're all just part of my autoimmune disease. And I had severe insomnia for over a decade. And um, you're right. And it's just one of those symptoms. But at the same time, insomnia has a huge toll. It has a huge toll on me professionally, economically, relationally. Um, because for me, if I didn't sleep, I was laying there awake and feeling extremely anxious and alone. And you know, all of us with autoimmune and mystery symptoms that that whole feeding of that story that we're alone and we're super specially rare and that we have this insolvable problem. It really, I mean, in the middle of night at 3 AM, it feels 10 times worse. Right. Um, how many of you watching right now are, have struggled or are struggling with insomnia? How many of you watching right now are alumni or are currently in our program? I would love for you to share in the comment section below your journey with insomnia. Tell us a little bit more about it because you're not alone and I wasn't alone, but I thought I was. And I, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say that I struggled with insomnia in elementary school. Yeah. And I would wake up my dad in the middle of the night to tell him that I couldn't sleep and I would miss school. <laughs> I would miss school because I was so tired because I was up all night. And what I didn't put the pieces together until like now is that I also yeah. suffered with constipation a lot when I was in elementary school. I was a terrible, terrible eater. And yeah. nobody connected that. Again, diet, nobody thinks about. Nobody thinks about. So I'm, I'm not sleeping. I'm not pooping. Those are the two, like two of the main things that you have to be corrected if you're going to correct any well, underlying issue. I mean, Allie, the constipation link, I mean, is huge because I remember as a kid, my sister and I are 18 months apart. So really close in age. What we spent like at least an hour a day doing was sitting back to back on the toilet seat together, swinging our legs, chatting and talking and all this stuff, because it took us at least an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and that was normal. Uh, and so, yeah, there's going to be, there's a huge link between what's going on with your bowel health, the, um, your digestion, the food that you eat and your insomnia. But speaking, let's bring it back to blood sugar, because here's the thing is, I mean, an, an alumni can actually, I would love alumni to comment on this, which is that one of the pillars, one of the main pillars of transform is actually blood sugar mastery. I didn't say if you dabbled and I said mastery. Okay. <laughs> so well, one of the pillars is mastery. And it's interesting. It's the pillar most people think they don't need help with. That's the truth bomb here. That is the pillar you need the most help in. And just to explain a little bit of the mechanisms around it is that for me, I mean, you know, there's five pillars of transform, right? And they all work together and being in the right order of working together is really important with that. However, blood sugar is one of those pillars that actually ties into every pillar. There is the blood sugar really impacts on every aspect. If you have don't know what the five pillars are and you want to watch the five pillars of transform, put five pillars in the comment section. If you're an alumni and you know how much blood sugar impacted your sleep and what the results were, comment in the comment below because you know what results speak. Now, one of the most important thing for people is that uh, when I say blood sugar, a really good example would be just that I know if you're not have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, I know your blood sugars are a shit show all day. And it's not just right before bed that that happened. And I also know, by the way, that if you don't sleep, okay, that's when a lot of your hormones are being made. So think about growth hormone, your ovarian hormones, think about testosterone, think about your adrenal hormones. There's a lot of hormones that needs to be made while you sleep. And if you don't freaking sleep, you're not making these hormones properly. The other thing is while you're sleeping, you're, that's the liver time in the middle of the night, you know, three to three. 2 to 4 a.m. is liver time. And if you don't have adequate blood sugar going into feed your liver, what you will find is that the liver is not going to work very well to detox your body or to help break down these hormones for hormone balance. So when your blood sugar is a shit show throughout the day, you're not going to be able to fall asleep or stay asleep. Or even when you sleep, you're going to wake up tired because you didn't get quality sleep. Ooh, alumni, I've never heard of blood sugar for dealing with insomnia. So grateful for the knowledge I've gained in this program and putting into practice. I love that. Um, I mean, and Allie, from a nutritionist standpoint, I mean, <laughs> what's the difference between a functional nutritionist and a regular nutritionist? What depth can you add to blood sugar that a regular nutritionist or dietitian can't bring to somebody? Like, well, what's, what's so different? Well, the I don't 
don't know that the that the concept of of blood sugar mastery is necessarily so different, but the functional approach we're we're looking we're not just looking at your macros and um, meal planning. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge part of of the blood sugar mastery, but we're looking at the whole picture, your whole body systems, how it all works together. And so, like we said, it's your are you pooping? Are you sleeping? And what is what's going on with your blood sugar, which has to do with your food? And so, if those things aren't happening, it's not about just um, how many calories you're eating. And I feel like it tends to get lost in like, well, it's just this food, and we have to look at the whole picture, and also from a bio individual approach, because each person is different. Every body is different. Even if you share DNA with somebody, you're still going to have different symptoms, different routes to resolution if you don't have the exact same issues, but you can have the same diagnosis and have different course of treatment because you are, you are an individual, but also your age, your lifestyle, what, what is going on for you that we have to tweak. We can still master it, help you master your blood sugar, but it might look differently than the professional athlete or, um, the, I don't know, the retired 65 year old grandma. Well, yeah. I mean, so example is we've had people in the program who are professional athletes. They're co competing in, let's say, professional tennis or something. So what we have found is that the solutions that they need, example, before a two hour game, a match would be different uh, than the blood sugar balancing for somebody who is sedentary per se. But the other mix that we throw into this is food sensitivities. If people have a lot of food restrictions or they have a lot of food sensitivities, they don't even, or they think they have a lot of food sensitivities when they don't, can impact upon their ability to eat food on a regular basis that's really balancing their blood sugar. So there's a lot of food sensitivity issues involved. And we also haven't, we're not going to dive into it, but digestion is a huge problem, huge problem for those with autoimmune disease. Did you guys know, you can quote me on this. There's many steps of digestion and just this first step, which is stomach acid. Okay. Stomach acid is step one. Do you know what percentage of people with autoimmune disease have low stomach acid? Alumni out there, do you guys know what percentage of people with autoimmune disease have the first step broken, which is the stomach acid? How many of them are low? 90%. So that means at least 90% of people with autoimmune disease have a digestion problem so that's impacting on their ability to break down their food and absorb it in a way that helps stabilize blood sugar. We've got layers of problems we're dealing with in autoimmunity. And this is also what I mean by like a, a bio-individual approach because you can say, okay, 90% of people have low stomach acid. That doesn't mean that the protocol for them other than increasing their stomach acid is going to be exactly the same. And that's what oh, we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a very individualized approach to okay, we have to we have to support your digestion with your stomach acid and here's how it's going to look for you. Here's how it's going to look for you. Here's how it's going to look for you. Yeah. And I, I would love because, you know, digestion is one of those surprises. It's not just blood sugar, but working on digestion and all the modules and all the work our clients do with you in the program on digestion is a shocking thing to our alumni. So I would love if there's any alumni who's watching who or anyone who's tried our digestive products to make a comment below on just what mastering digestion has done for your autoimmunity. If you can comment in the comment section, that'd be really great. Allie, what I'd love to do is I would love to share with people out there watching what it's like to work with a functional nutritionist in our program and what a typical client actually looks like. <laughs> okay. And so we have a special guest today. Yeah. Okay. Someone you might recognize. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Brooke. Oh, hey, Dr. Maggie. <laughs> Listen. Hi. All right, everybody. Brooke has volunteered as tribute to be our <laughs> Sure. To, be, to be the typical client that actually comes into a program. And <laughs> Joanne, you may know Brooke. <laughs> Joanne says digest has been a huge game changer. Yeah, taking a quality digestive enzyme for those autoimmune disease, big game changer, right? So Brooke, let's describe, and I want people out there to just understand what our typical client actually looks like. Because Brooke, first introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, so I, I am just finishing my eighth week in the program. But when I first... Um, six months ago, start started down this autoimmune nightmare. Um, it was totally foreign to me. Um, unlike a lot of my sweet and wonderful, amazing friends in the program who've dealt with 
these struggles for decades. This was new to me and it threw me because I'd spent, you know, 55 years being extremely healthy, doing everything I wanted to, eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And then menopause hit and all of a sudden my focus became weight management. Mm. So I started to gain weight where that had never been an issue for me. So for probably the last 10 years, my entire focus has been high protein, low carb. Mm. And I felt like that meant if I'm, if I'm avoiding processed sugar, like I'm, my blood sugar should be balanced and I should be great. Mm. So when I came across this program and jumped all in, so excited about it. And the first, um, (laughs) <laughs> module reduce blood sugar. I'm like, I got this one. <laughs> Wake me when you're done. You know what? Well, I, you know, this, this will be so good. But I can't wait to get to the good stuff, right? Like this <laughs> one, I get it. I'm going to just sail through this. Uh, honestly, in my, not, not even proud, but just grateful. There was something I wasn't, you know, going to struggle with. This was going to be great. So, um, wow. Y- you know, it's probably, the area I need the most work. Really? Yes. Okay. And I hear this every, no, I don't hear this every single day. <laughs> and it was shocking to me. I mean, I'm in blood sugar spike all day, every day. That, I, I'm the master at that. You talk about mastering blood sugar. <laughs> I'm the master of the blood sugar spike because I'm up and down all day and I never put it together. Never. Because you thought you had it licked. People I did. Like, I'm keto, I'm paleo, or I'm not eating carbs. I'm good. I'm avoiding processed sugar and I'm focused on my protein and I'm very careful on my carb. And, and yet my weight still struggled, but the insomnia was huge for my life. Like I, I did not, I had a hard time getting to sleep. I would take melatonin. I would take Benadryl. I mean, whatever it took to try and get some sleep, but I never stayed asleep. Didn't matter what I took or how much, 3 a.m. I'm like a clock. I was awake and I could not figure it out. Could not. This is is Brooke on melatonin. (laughs) (laughs) Until I found out my melatonin I was using had had, uh, gluten in it. So that was. (laughs) This is brand. This is such a pet peeve of mine. Pissing me off so much. Do you know the most common brand, well, many brands of supplements, but the most common brand of melatonin, they freaking sell this at Costco, has, guess what, gluten in it. Well, yeah, so I'm loading up on all of that, you know. So anyway, this it's been an, just such a learning, and I will be strictly honest, I am not in the mastery stage, but I am so encouraged. I can, I can do this. It's going to take some lifestyle change. When you spent so much time learning and getting into habits of don't have breakfast, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's friends. a badge of honor. I'm getting my coffee in the morning and yeah. calling it good. And then I get right. to work and at 10 30, I'm, I'm going to eat anything that's not moving, you know, <laughs> and it's never good. It's whatever's easy and accessible, which in, in my office is never anything. From low fat. Well, yeah. I mean, Ali, this is a perfect example. Someone who comes in thinking that, that the, I'm low carb and therefore my blood sugar is mastered. What do you find is the biggest mistake that someone like Brooke would make? Because by the way, everybody in our program, um, Brooke and along with other clients will have live training sessions with Ali twice a week. Mm-hmm. So this is a lot of time you get to spend with Top Gun functional nutritionist Allie to really work on this. So I, I love your insight, Ali. What is the biggest mistake that you think people that has uh, Brooke's mindset coming in? What do you think is the biggest mistake they're making? Well, I think they forget about fiber. Yeah. And that fiber, that vegetables are actually carb. And that that's what you need is the fiber. And so Woo! I would never say, so this is a key difference. In, in a nutritionist and a functional nutritionist is I say protein, fat, and fiber. Yes. I never mention the word carbohydrate. Never. They will constantly focus on those macros. And yes, they're important, but in the form of fiber. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing for me. It's like I say carbs in terms of mostly fiber. That's how I say it. But it's this whole thing where people think carbs are bad. No. Not all carbs low are and bad. No carb. I'm low and no carb. I got it. I'm low and no carb. I'm like, <laughs> where's your fiber? And that's constantly mm-hmm. what we're talking about. It's the breakfast thing and the where's the fiber? Where's the fiber? 
Well, okay. So that's typically when people come in the program, that's an issue. But Brooke, was that one of your mistakes or that was not one of your mistakes? Totally. totally. Ah! I, I didn't, I didn't even think about fiber. Fiber's not, I mean, I haven't said What's that fiber? Fiber for a year. <laughs> no, I'm honestly, that's fiber. I am honestly was focused on avoiding processed food. Yeah. And so which is you a know, good thing. That's a good thing to avoid. Right. And so that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I've got this. I, you know, I avoid all those white things, you know, the pasta, the white rice, the, you know, bread. I'm really careful about all that. Caramel's brown. What's that? Caramel is brown. <laughs> Delicious, isn't it? Anyway, so I was so just uneducated is probably the best word. Like my intention was to be healthy. But really what I was focused on was weight, not health. Yeah. And if I'm being honest, that's what's driven me for the last 10 years. Okay. Fast forward. Brooke is getting educated. The whole thing about our program is people have video modules to educate them, printed materials and live training sessions with me and with Allie. Those are separate, right? And my question for Brooke is, what's something you learned from me or the video modules about blood sugar that was mind blowing or that was a game changer for you or that was a shocker for you something new you know what i think it was just the the um the handouts are fabulous in the really being able to visualize the spikes you know this the spike and what it's doing and I mean, I, 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 I am the spike. Like I said, I'm master of the spikes. So, you spike. You know, spike like, spike around. Watching, watching, I mean, learning through that and then seeing how um, not easy it is to make, to incorporate the change, but how doable it is. This yeah. is not something that you've got to have a master's degree or a doctorate to figure out. These are things I can start working on. Um, am I mastered them? No. Am I shifting my mindset all the time from 10 years of focus? Yes, mm -hmm. but it's doable. And the, the difference it's made was stunning. Stunning. Well, okay. First of all, we'll talk about differences later, but I'm going to ask first thing, which is what's one hot tip you learned from Allie? Because I know you see her all the time, but I'm asking what's one hot tip. And then meanwhile, I'll have Allie think about what's one hot tip that would be surprising for people. What's one hot tip to deal with insomnia or blood sugar that was, wow, could be that easy or, oh, I didn't think of that. You know, oh. I, Allie's so fun and engaging to watch. I find myself just so <laughs> entertained by her when she's teaching. I'm like, she's so super cool. And just, I enjoy it. So a lot of times, like um, with my work schedule, like, I miss the live, but I can't wait to turn on the recorded part. But, um, and I, Allie, I think this was something from you, but it was that bookending my day in protein. Um, like I said, skipping my morning breakfast was probably 90% of my normal. I'm not, to be honest with you, I, I run or walk every morning um, early. Then I run home I'm, I'm, and I feel great. I'm thirsty, so I chug a lot of water. Then I hurry and get ready for work. If I don't have time to eat, I'm not worried about it. I just run out the door and don't even think about it. That's my normal so to be much was more your normal correction was your normal was language now, matters to be more intentional and just um to make that a priority that i start with protein i'm ending with protein and i'm i'm throwing it in that has been something that's totally doable for me What's one thing of protein you're adding before bed i'm curious um you know what? i have um a protein shake that i like that i've added the collagen to Hell yeah. And it's it's a treat for me. Like this is, you know, I don't need it is my, a treat. I don't need my sugar cereal because I'm want a treat before bed or ice cream or whatever it is. I've got this chicken. I'm throwing my collagen in it and I feel great about that. Um it's just yeah. that's that simple. It was that yeah. simple. So like and for me, my hot tip on that one is if you don't like to eat before bed just pick up golden balance. Like our golden balance has all the herbs that really help stimulate the liver and hormone balancing. Yep. It's got the collagen in it. 
um, to actually help with the protein mix. And it's got coconut milk, milk solids in it with some of the fat. And I always tell people, you can always, if you wanted to add extra fat, you could throw some of our pro MCT oil right in it. As you foam it up and blend it up all thick and foamy and warm, you can actually have like a warm beverage that has it all in there. And that's like, that's my treat before bed every night. This is why, like, if you actually go look at the product Golden Balance, we probably have at least 20 or 30 um, people on videos just talking about inner mastermind calls. Oh my God, golden balance. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. But it's really based on the concept that we need to get your liver going at night mm -hmm. and we need to get your blood sugar stable throughout the night. So your liver can keep working throughout the night. So that's my one hot tip. If there is a product that I would recommend, it'd be golden balance, right? The other product that I would recommend is the pro collagen WB adding some collagen to even a cup of tea at night, like Brooke is doing. She's adding to a protein shake, but you can add collagen to a tea at night or even a cup of broth at night before bed that's just pumping up that protein like crazy flavorless tasteless great easy right that's what i mean by easy and doable doesn't have to be that hard now ali your hot tip my hot tip is your blood sugar balance your um your mastery so that you have good sleep actually starts in the morning when you wake up hell yes wake up so not when you go to bed if you're trying to do it cram before bed, you've already blown it. Like right. you have to, it starts from the moment you wake up because otherwise this is how, and I was on that, that roller coaster too, for years and years and years and years, sugar, yeah. sugar addict, junkie, junkie right here. So starting with either skipping breakfast, you're in a dip. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you're going to be craving anything, like you said, anything that isn't nailed down, you're going to grab it. But really what it is, it's bagels and donuts or that, that syrupy coffee or sugary cereal, something, anything, because you're just ravenous and your blood sugar is low. And you're, for me, it's like my eyes fall out of my head. Like when I'm low blood sugar, you get cranky and then you get that, whatever it is, and then you're up, you're high. But that lasts for like 20 minutes and then you're down and the down is down. And so you do that all day long, especially when you skip breakfast or have like a really sugary breakfast. But when you have that balance, that protein, fat and fiber first thing in the morning, you're even because you're always going to have some spikes and dips, but you want them to be like little like riding little waves like a boat that's just do, 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 and not. <laughs> I mean, yes, I, that's I mean, where I really went wrong. I mean, because, you know, when I was working in the clinic, it was like I would have to get to the clinic by eight o'clock. You got kids at home. Uh, you're lucky if you got them fed, but you're out the door. And literally, I mean, my morning was either nothing or refilling my cup with coffee, like a pot of coffee all morning, or my breakfast was frappuccino. You know, and, and I did that for about five years. And I, when I think back, those are the, the five sickest years I ever had. Five sickest years I've ever had. So we're all guilty of mm -hmm. not starting the day outright, which is why we call it like Brooke, you said book ending the day really matters. You got to bookend with really solid food and meal that's macronutrient balanced in the morning. And you got to really bookend the end of the, I think end of the night snack is really crucial. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what kind of data we collect in the program that really confirms that your blood sugar was a shit show, not just your opinion, my opinion, or Allie's. So Brooke, we just went over actually a result with Brooke yesterday in the mastermind call we had, and it was like, ah, okay, what did we find out from a data standpoint that confirms your blood sugar was a shit show? Well, my cortisol readings are, are off the chart all day long, like off the chart. Yeah. And at night, not low, Ooh. yeah, high everything. So, and here's the problem your doctors don't know anything about adrenal, adrenal fatigue, adrenal hormone balance, cortisol. Never forever. been tested. Well, never yeah. Tested. How many of you have never had your hormones tested, including your adrenal hormones? No. So, I, you know, in our program, we go through and we teach in depth how to understand your own hormone and adrenal results. So what, Brooke, not to test your knowledge or anything, but to test your knowledge and everything. Oh, great. 
what causes cortisol spikes throughout the day uh, first or even in the middle of the night? Because just so the audience understands, normal cortisol curve should spike in the morning and go down as you go through. And at night, it goes down around three or four. It starts to go back up again, getting ready for that um, morning peak. So it's up, then down, and then later, early morning, four or five, 5 a.m. starts to go back up again. What we find is that someone like Brooke will have where even before she even goes to bed, the cortisol is already starting to go up at night. Mm -hmm. All night long, that cortisol was through. I mean, how high was your cortisol at night? I, I mean, I think the arrow was just like up, like there's no stop. Like what happens when the chart is yeah. readable? There's just an arrow no, up towards the sky, arrow. like a yes. volcano. Yeah. That was Brooks cortisol. So guys, it ain't my opinion that blood sugar causes huge hormonal problems. And here's the thing. When cortisol is really high at night, what happens? Okay. Here's where science meets nutrition meets real per person like Brooke. Okay. So when you have high cortisol, do you know that cortisol and melatonin are always opposite? So example, if you have high cortisol in the middle of the night, that means your melatonin is really low. If you have low cortisol in the middle of the night, which is what normally should happen, you will have high melatonin. Okay. So she's sitting here with cortisol sky high, suppressing the melatonin on the opposite end. She's like, I'm going to take a whole bunch and that's going to fix the problem. Well, it doesn't fix the problem because her cortisols are super high, suppressing even the actions of melatonin, no matter how much she took. Okay. Of that gluten lace melatonin. <laughs> 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 and so that the problem with having high cortisol at night too is, is that yes, it actually suppresses melatonin. But the second mechanism is that cortisol is one of the precursors to adrenaline. Your body will raise cortisol because it thinks you're dying and it says she needs to fight or flight. So every time you dip really low blood sugar in the middle of the night, cortisol says, I better go up to get adrenaline ready because she's in a fight for her. It's do or die. And so as a result, high cortisol will turn to more adrenaline, anxiety throughout the night, palpitations, mm -hmm. all these thoughts, racing thoughts. You're like, I'm going to meditate, damn it. Uh, and it's just like thought after thought after thought after There's thought no it's because of high adrenaline, right? There's no so, way you can sleep through that. There's no way. Yeah. And it's not because you're weak. It's not because you didn't take enough melatonin. It's because your blood sugar is really jacked up and has a tremendous impact on your adrenal hormone cortisol at night, which then suppresses melatonin and causes an increase in adrenaline. And when you don't sleep, you're not making all the good hormones that you need for hormone balance. And there, well, that was evident in my data too. So, you know, you're right. You say you can't make this up, right? It's right there. I can't make this shit up. Yes. <laughs> this is why one of the things that we talk about a lot is is mindset and like your your sleep hygiene because that's another you know with the cortisol waking you up if you're in if you're going to bed even with your melatonin you're going to bed feeling very anxious feeling um you know with your head spinning that monkey mind going to bed that's another reason why people will wake up. I mean, the, the best example I can think of is if you have to, let's say you're going to the airport in the morning and your alarm is set for 4 a.m. And you're like, oh God, I'm never going to make this, make my alarm. I hope I don't sleep through my alarm. And you set like three alarms and you wake up at like 3.30 and you're like, I guess I didn't need an alarm. And it's because <laughs> of that anxiety of I can't miss this flight. I can't oversleep. And so it keeps you up. Now, hopefully you're not like that all the time. That's a that's a one-time experience because you like have an out of the ordinary time reason for, for being up. Yeah. But that kind of the same thing that happens it, it's your, it's your, it, that's cortisol waking you up because there's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, we're going to miss this plane. I can curse here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I mean, these are just huge truth bombs and people think it's like, it's obvious, but it's sure as hell not. And when you put into practice, it's sure as hell not. You said, Brooke, your result, you, Brooke, you said the results have been stunning. So mm -hmm. I'm curious so far, what has your results been? Um, you know, it's funny. So when I found that my melatonin had gluten in it, of course, I'm throwing that out. So I, I threw that out. Well, I thought I'm going to have to go find one that doesn't have gluten. But I I was too big. I didn't have time to go to the store or get, you know, get online and wait for it to come. So 
it went three or four days, but I had been so trying to work on, um, you know, grounding my carbs through the day and bookending, you know, the day with protein and staying ahead of the hunger, all these things we're learning, trying to do. And I was, I woke up and I had slept through my typical three o'clock wake up and it's six o'clock, which for me, 6 a.m. is uh, time to get up and go run. And I had, I started to have really good runs. I said to my yeah. um, friends, I've run with them for 20 years and, and I'm always the one dragging behind. I'm like, you better watch out this morning because I, I I feel good. Like <laughs> you might be the end this time. It's not going to be me. It's like, holy shit, I'm scared of her now. <laughs> I just, I, and my husband said, you did not toss and turn all night. So I, oh. I had a much more restful sleep. And I, I, when I looked at him in the mirror in the morning, when I got up to go, I'm just, I'm like, okay, I'm drinking more water. I'm doing these things. And I'm like, this is making a difference. And already it's, it's almost not too easy because I've been t- honestly, it takes a great deal of effort um, to change your habits, to commit and, you know, to stay ahead of the hunger and do all the things that we need to do. But the payoff, I don't, I'm not looking for a hundred supplements. In fact, I stopped taking my melatonin. I don't take any melatonin right now. And I'm like, okay, but I'm sleeping so much better than I have in the last five years. So it's doable. It's totally doable. That's the thing is a lot of people, yes, I sell supplements. We sell supplements in our store, but I have a philosophy about supplementation. To me, supplements are, in fact, green medicine which is that sometimes they're necessary. And if they are, use data to make that decision. But my bigger goal in life is to teach people the why so they can fix the underlying root cause so then they don't need to be dependent on green medicine or supplements for life. That's the opposite of what supplement companies are trying to do. They don't want to educate you on how to fix it. Of course not. They want a dependency model where you're addicted to their supplement or their medication for life. So this is the opposite of that, which is something I'm really proud of is we're educating Brooke to kick ass and be damn sexy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, that's the case. That is the case. (laughs) But here's the other interesting factoid. Okay. So speaking about women and libido. Okay. Just bringing it back to sex. You know, it's always about sex. (laughs) Is that a lot of people think that women with low libido is because they have low testosterone. That is not true. That's false. In fact, the number one killer of libido in women is actually insomnia. And We're the tired. reason. Yeah. Yes. Exhausted. Fatigue is yeah. the number one killer of libido. It ain't your testosterone, ladies. <laughs> and so back to sex. <laughs> back to me. Um <laughs> Look back at me, ladies. <laughs> back to sex. Back to me. <laughs> I'm, I sound like the Old Spice commercial. <laughs> back to me. Um, it really insomnia really impacts upon your fatigue and your performance, whether it's athletic, whether it's professional, or even wanting sex later in the day. Whatever it is, really that getting that good night's sleep is so freaking important. True. Yeah. Question for you guys. Okay. A lot of people are looking at Ali as a nutritionist and they're like, oh, I could just go get it in a nutritionist and they, I could learn all this shit. So Brooke, I'm going to ask you, super intelligent, sexy woman, what is, how, what has been the difference with being able to work in our program with a functional nutritionist versus anything you've ever done with your health? You, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about this um, earlier in the day. I, I have bought meal plans Mm. Um, from other sources, other people, um, before I ever got sick and I followed them. And to be honest with you, they were great. They gave me some great recipes that I, I use and enjoy. Um, but I found myself after a couple of months, suddenly I'm sliding back to my old ways. And I, then I forget, and I'm like saying, it's just too much work to do, you know, to well, do all ultimately when they get tired of their food. And, and even right. that, it's the lack of education that came with it. So yeah. I can have the buy-in. There's no, um, I'm not invested in it because it just was handed to me without any explanation, without any education. And I just followed it. Like I say, they were great. And I still use um, different, I enjoyed them. But I found myself 
kind of just putting them aside after a while um because i'm i'm not understanding what the value is for me i'm just trying to do better and so this program it's all about education it's about yeah. learning and when you are invest like that when you're being taught so you're not just buying a meal plan buying you know someone handing you a new recipe but understanding it and it's it's a little intimidating at first because i i kind of stay in my lane with nutrition I'm not adventuresome. I so I I, I bow to you both because I know you we eat food. Like, I've never even heard of that food. What is that? So but picky eater here, picky eater. So I like I I will say until my dying day, you can be a picky eater and you can still expand your horizons and eat healthfully. I'm and the other way around. Yeah, you can be a damn good cook and foodie and have autoimmune disease and food sensitivities and have the world at your feet and cooking possibilities. Right? And that's just the learning that you get in this program. So instead of being so intimidated that I'm like, I got to stay in my lane here. I know I like these 10 foods and I'm <laughs> so, I'm so good with these 10 and, and all that. I'm starting to think, okay. Hey, and one of the cute ladies in my um, group, our pod group, it was Kelly. She said, I, I'm a simple eater. I totally relate to that. But she said, if I try one new recipe a week, look what I can incorporate. And it's about little change that we can continue with. And so it's the education that makes this program so different, so different, in my opinion. Well, I also think that we, it took us a long time to actually find uh, a nutritionist that I felt was honestly worthy and that I honestly, I, I shopped far and wide, kissed, kissed a lot of different people, frogs, <laughs> <laughs> had to really like figure out like what was a really good fit. But mm -hmm. and, 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 and in learning a lot about hiring a good functional nutritionist, it took me four years to find Allie here. And for me, um, finding one that loves food and as much as I do, and I mean, it's hard actually, most people actually going to functional nutritionists, having experienced a shit ton of food trauma, they haven't resolved. Mm -hmm. And so I love the fact that Allie's relationship with food is so filled with the joy, enthusiasm, and love that it is infectious. <laughs> She makes me, you know, me that wants to stay in my lane. I'm like, no, look how cool Ellie is. Look how <laughs> she's having with that. I can try that. So it's for me, it's slow. The change is slow, but I can do that. I can incorporate some new. I can look at that list and go, I don't know what that fit is, but I'll go find out. You know, I, I can, I can branch out a little bit. So it's been, like I say, the fact that this is doable for even general people like me, I feel like I'm kind of that average you know, person thinking they're healthy, really, they're not um, kind of stuck in the lane that we're used to with nutrition. There's, there's a whole new world opening up here. And it's really quite exciting. So as long as you're open to it, there's so many things. Yeah. That's why even with all of the food um, uh, sensitivities that people have, and they've had to either permanently take something out or just temporarily and like, what can I eat? I got nothing to eat. I'm like, hold on, deep breath. There's so many options that you probably just haven't heard of yet because you've been in this really? narrow lane really? and so we're going to expand your horizons. The ultimate goal is always to, to broaden, not even if you have to temporarily restrict, it's always to add more and more and more. Oh, yeah. And I'm the queen of modifying. If you don't like an ingredient or oh, yeah. to an ingredient, you just, we find a new one, we pivot and I take the you know fatty fat fat recipes that are crap and i turn them into healthy you know yeah. like i love doing this, that like not that food. yeah yeah I, I want food to be to taste good to your mouth and to your brain but also to feel good in your body and you know the difference well and that's, that's cool. what i want people to, to to really get in touch with like mm, yum and also I didn't have bloating. My bowel movements are amazing. I serious. <laughs> no rashes. Like that's what we want from our food. It's 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 the fuel you run on, not Duncan. It's food. Well, we, I need your enthusiasm. So keep it up because I'm like, okay, all right. Well, I have to do a lot of self talk. Well, here's <laughs> the other thing though. Do you know that your attitude towards food is the attitude of the five closest people to you? Mm. Mm. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Think about that. 
It's, it's, yeah, exactly. The other thing is just an example about modification recipes and making life easy. Fat bombs. We have a fat bomb recipe in our recipe book that for those that are in the program, we have shared the fat bomb recipe in the Facebook group. You guys have seen me make the fat bomb recipe in the Facebook group and YouTube. Those of you in the Facebook group or YouTube, if you want to watch me make my fat bombs, right? <laughs> fat bomb video, we'll hook you up with that. Um, but like, let's say it's the recipe calls for peanut butter. People are just like, suddenly someone's like, I'm allergic to peanuts and, and it's, they're frozen, Allie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, okay. If you can't do peanut butter, why can't you do cashew nut butter? Why can't you do sunflower nut butter? Why can't- Oh, I didn't know that I, I could do that? I didn't you can. Oh, that's, that's new for me. I would have just been like, well, sorry. Well, yes, yeah, you can. So, you know, it, it's a whole mind shift and it, it does take some time to incorporate, but again, it's doable. And I think that that's the part that keeps me motivated is watching the enthusiasm for it and thinking, you know what, I, I'm missing out out there and I can, I need to branch out a little bit or a lot. And, you know, I can do this. I can the, do it. The thing is that people don't realize it's sort of a, like a ninja way that nutrition and like health sneaks up on you without you even really trying. As long as you're open to expanding your palate and trying new things, which for years I didn't do. And so the, the, the me from 20 years ago would be shocked at the things that I eat now on a daily <laughs> basis. But if you're open to it, what happens is palate changes. You can't eat the oh, crap yeah. you used to eat. It's too, it's too much. It's too yeah. sour. It's too sweet. It's like, too do you guys know broccoli actually is sweet? <laughs> broccoli is sweet, <laughs> but you have never tasted it because you're busy bombing your tongue with fake sugars or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fat yeah. bombs are amazing. She's done hazelnut butter. Oh, that sounds so good. Mm -hmm. But my favorite is almond butter. Well, the other thing is you can also pump up the protein by adding a half a scoop or a scoop of collagen right into the fat bomb recipe. Another modification. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I love that. These are real alumni who's modifying our recipe, Allie. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, diagnosis of autoimmune Hashimoto's Sjogren syndrome. Yeah. There's a lot of you guys out there. Those of you, uh, in the comment section, please do share with us what autoimmune struggles you have, what food struggles you have, blood sugar issues that you have. What is your biggest aha? I would love it. If you could type in the chat, if you're an alumni and you're watching and I would love your hot tip. Do you have a hot tip? Like a lot of alumni has been sharing the hot tip. If you want our fat bomb recipe, type fat bomb recipe down below. Um, what I'd love to do is just FYI, everybody, um, really most importantly, uh, Brooke and Allie and I are here to give you the nutritional truth bomb, but also share that if you got an autoimmune issue going on, it's big. You need to get yourself educated. You get, you need to get yourself, be open and get empowered with this. You can be super hot and sexy like Brooke as well. Motivate <laughs> <laughs> people, stop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can wear, wear red as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Allie and I, we're going to go red. <laughs> All right, everyone. For those of you um, that, um, if you want to learn more about our program, um, you, there's going to be a link we're going to put in, in the chat um, that you can message our team. If you have posted any message under our uh, YouTube, under Instagram, or under our uh, video here, you can also check your Facebook message requests or check under your comments later tonight. There'll be a response from us and resources that we'd love to share with you guys. Any final thoughts, Allie? Final thoughts, Brooke, before we peace out, sign out? No, oh, I'm just, just, you know me, I'm so grateful. It's just been such a, a, life-changing experience to be part of this program. And I would say to anyone out there, if you're mm -hmm. contemplating what to do, invest in yourself, do it, do it. And I, I, yeah, I would add to that. If you think that you have it handled, you think you have your diet, <laughs> you, have, you no. have your blood sugar mastery down, and you're still experiencing symptoms, if you're having pain, if you're having digestive issues, if you're having insomnia, if you're having irritability, like mood swings, brain fog, headaches, okay. if you're having a whole host of things, 
something's not right. You don't have it mastered and it's okay. You can get it mastered, but you're not there yet. Your body is telling you all those signs and symptoms are your body saying, help me, help me, help me. And we're ignoring them. So well, stop ignoring them. But Allie, that's a big point I make in the program. People think I'm joining a medical program. It's all going to be about the data from the labs. I'm going, that's just one set of data. Excuse me. Yeah. What we're ignoring is what's the second set of data that's sometimes even more important is well, your symptoms. I would argue that that's the first. I agree with you. Data to confirm what we're thinking, right? Yeah, and we're we're actually teaching our patients and our and, and out there our doctors are teaching patients to ignore their symptoms, dismiss, downplay or it's not on paper. We you don't know, treat the paper here. We don't treat well, the paper. And, and, to help guide us because we're like, well, we're thinking there's a whole bunch of things here. It could be this or this. this. What is it? Well, um, Alex, about this, a typical person with autoimmunity goes into the doctor with at least a list of symptoms seven long. And you see your doctor's eyes glaze over and they're going to be like, maybe the top one or two or something like that. And then really what, what we're actually doing is we're bringing data to the doctor and what we're feeling is dismiss as if the map that it's not an important set of set of information. And to me, it is the most important set of information. Here's the thing, the data from your body. Okay. It's often harsh, but it's always fair. It's mm -hmm. telling you the truth. So you think you got something licked and you got those symptoms. You don't because your body's telling you the truth. And a big part of this is teaching everyone to trust themselves and their body and the information that their body's giving them. Self-trust is actually key to mastery. Yeah. All right, everybody. That's a wrap. If you want to learn more about our program, click a link to start a chat with our team and check your message request later. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.